now. Can you turn on the mic? Is it good? OK. Now I can hear myself. OK, so uh, I'll be talking about this joint work with uh, a large number of authors from Stanford, Galois, UMD, Oregon State University, and Yale, titled uh, 5Gen, a framework for prototyping applications using multilinear maps and matrix branching programs. So in this work, what we do is we build libraries and tools for uh, multilinear maps and matrix branching programs. And then using those tools, we build various applications. Uh, in particular, uh, program obfuscation and multi-input functional encryption. So I'll begin by focusing on, on the particular applications that we build and then get into um, the underlying tools and libraries that we construct um, to realize those applications. So uh, first application is program obfuscation. Hopefully this is an intuitive idea for most people in the audience. Basically, we want to make a program difficult to understand. So here on the left, we have a simple Python program that prints Hello World. And on the right, we have uh, a program that has the same input-output behavior, namely it prints Hello World, but it's in some intuitive sense much more complicated. So obfuscation is used a lot in industry and practice, um, basically to protect against IP uh, for DRM purposes for a lot of different applications. However, because most of the techniques are um, ad hoc, they often get broken. So with some static analysis and dynamic analysis tools, you can often reverse engineer um, the program you, you're looking at to learn its secrets. So another approach is to take a more cryptographic approach. So basically the idea here is we want to define formally what it means for a program to be obfuscated, and then um, construct a scheme that satisfies that definition, assuming some hard underlying problem. So this was the approach taken in 2001 by Barack et al. They defined an intuitive notion of what obfuscation is, and that's this black box, virtual black box notion. But unfortunately, they showed that this is impossible to satisfy in general. Um, so that kind of dampened the spirits of the people working on obfuscation until 2013, when uh, a candidate construction for a weaker notion in distinguishability obfuscation uh, was proposed uh, by Garg et al. And this really inspired a lot of work on both more efficient I.O. constructions and applications using I.O. Um, now, the point of this talk is not to uh, go over the definitions, so I'm just going to elide that for the rest of the talk. But uh, um, in this work, we're implementing this, this weaker obfuscation notion. The other application is uh, multi-input functional encryption. So what is functional encryption? Uh, you can think of it as a standard encryption scheme but where um, instead of when you decrypt learning the plain text, you learn a function of the plain text. And the multi-input functional encryption extends this to multiple inputs. Um, so in particular, we're interested in a secret key, multi-input functional encryption. So this has uh, three algorithms. There's a setup algorithm that produces an evaluation key and a secret key given some function f. And then you can encrypt under the secret key um, a number of messages under a number of slots, in this case, n messages under n slots. You get your, uh, your n ciphertexts. And now when you decrypt using the evaluation key, you get, instead of m1 through mn, you get a function of m1 through mn. So the output is only some function of the, the plain text. So why is this interesting? It's interesting because using MIFE, you can realize uh, order-revealing encryption, which is useful in uh, encrypted databases. So order revealing encryption uh, says that the ciphertext only reveals the order of the plain text. And you can realize it by considering the function f, which on two inputs just tells you that, say, it outputs one if x is less than y and zero otherwise. OK, so those are the applications we're interested in constructing. So what we do in this work is uh, we build a framework for building these types of applications. Um, so just to run through um, how this works. So the user will begin by writing a function specification of either the function they want to obfuscate or that they want to use in multi-input functional encryption. This is written in a programming language called Cryptol, which was developed at Galois. And it allows you to describe crypto algorithms and formally prove properties of those algorithms. Uh, we then build a. Uh, compiler that compiles from crypto to matrix branching programs, cry FSM. And I'll get into if, exactly what matrix branching programs and multilinear maps are for now, uh, later in the talk. 
Um, now, given a matrix branching program compiled from the crypto specification, we can then input those into one of our two applications. And these applications are built on top of multilinear maps, and we build a library um, to wrap around different implementations of multilinear maps. Um, so I should note that uh, multilinear maps are still uh, being researched and developed, and there's been a lot of various um, attacks on these multilinear maps. So in this work, we're not claiming necessarily you know, the most secure MIFE or obfuscation construction. It's more to design a framework for uh, prototyping and experimenting with new constructions for multilinear maps and new constructions for MIFE and obfuscation. OK, so for the rest of this talk, I'll begin by describing this uh, compilation process. I'll then uh, briefly describe this uh, lower level multilinear map library. And then I'll describe how we can combine those two tools to build um, our obfuscator. And you can look at the paper for how we do MIFE. And then I'll give some performance results. OK, so what is a matrix branching program? Uh, so you can think of it as another way to specify some function f. So consider the function f that has four input bits and produces one output bit. So a matrix branching program is a representation of this function as uh, two components. The first is a sequence of pairs of matrices. So uh, here we have eight uh, pairs of matrices. Oh, the orange isn't coming up. Okay. Um, and we also have a function that maps inputs to matrices. So in this case, the gray, uh, so x1 will map to the gray matrices, x2 maps to the uh, green matrices, uh, et cetera. So how do we evaluate this matrix branching program? So say we want to evaluate it on input 1010, zero, one, then we essentially just select the appropriate uh, matrices in our uh, pairs of matrices that correspond to the um, input bits. So we select B10 because um, X2 is 0 and um, 0 maps to the, the green matrices. And now we take all of those matrices, we multiply them together, and if the product is the identity matrix, say, we output 1, and otherwise we output 0. So Barrington in 1986 showed that you can compile any function uh, viewed as a uh, Boolean circuit um, into a matrix branching program. And the blow up in terms of the length of the, length of the matrix branching program is exponential in the depth of the circuit. In, uh, in our work, we, instead of going through the Barrington compilation process, uh, we start uh, from uh, finite state machines and then compile those into uh, matrix uh, branching programs. So this is still exponential. We don't get around this exponential um, blow up. But we find that this ends up producing much uh, smaller matrices, and that ends up um, being important in the performance. OK, so in more detail, how does this work? So uh, here is a simple uh, crypto program that compares two, uh, two numbers, say two bit numbers. Now, using CryFSM, we can compile this into a layered finite state machine. So that's a finite state machine. Uh, where basically um, any node connects to, will only have uh, um, arrows to the next layer in the finite state machine. Um, and now we can take this layered finite state machine and just consider the adjacency matrices for all of the nodes. And that gives us our, uh, uh, the matrices in the matrix branching program. Okay, so uh, Besides just this compilation process, we also introduce um, three optimizations, which, which help reduce the uh, matrix branching program length and the total number of elements in these matrices. And that ends up being very important for efficiency. Um, so I'll go through each of these uh, optimizations. So uh, the first, uh, which is uh, the base change optimization, which was pro initially proposed by uh, Bonet et al. in 2015. The basic idea is that the way I've presented matrix branching programs thus far is that it's a sequence of pairs of matrices. But there's no inherent need for these to be pairs. We can choose any arbitrary base D here. So this is good because it reduces, for a finite input length, we'll reduce the, um, 
length of the matrix branching program because we can encode essentially more digits into um, each input. Uh, but it increases the number of uh, elements because instead of two pairs or a pair of matrices, we now have D matrices per uh, column. Okay, uh, the second optimization, also initially proposed by uh, Bonet et al., um, is matrix premultiplication. So suppose we have some function that, say, takes two inputs and one of the inputs is fixed. Then obviously we know uh, which matrices that we'll be selecting, and so we could just multiply them ahead of time. And so we've directly reduced the length of the matrix branching program. Finally, the third optimization is dimension reduction, and this is one that we introduce in this work. Um, so the basic observation here is that when we're converting the layered finite state machine into, uh, um, into a set of matrices, we basically take the adjacency matrix of each uh, node in the finite state machine. But there's some states that are unreachable, so we can prune those out of the adjacency matrices. And so we can reduce uh, the total size of the matrix branching program. And so this is good because it uh, decreases the number of elements. However, it may be incompatible with uh, matrix premultiplication. Um, in particular, if we apply matrix premultiplication first, there could be instances where we don't gain any benefit from dimension reduction. Okay, so now let me uh, briefly discuss uh, multilinear maps and the library we built there, and then I'll uh, describe how we can combine these two to uh, build obfuscation. Okay, so uh, the general idea of a multilinear map, in a very abstract sense, you can think of it as an extension of bilinear maps to arbitrary lengths. Um, so in more detail, a multilinear map supports four operations, encode, add, mult, and zero test. Um, encode takes uh, an element and maps it into the multilinear map. Um, so take some element X and some set denoted here by this uh, blue square, and it maps it into an encoded element under that set. You can then add two uh, um, encoded elements under the same set, and you get the addition under that set. And then you can multiply two uh, encoded elements under two different sets, and you essentially get the multiplication under the union of the two sets. And finally, there's a top level set here denoted by this uh, brown square. And uh, you can zero test an element in the top level set, and that tells you whether that value is zero or not. So those, th this is the uh, operations that a multilinear map gives you. And the number of multiplications you can do in some sense equals the multilinear map arity. So uh, it's important to note that uh, encoding an element into the multilinear map is expensive, as well as multiplication. And uh, as we increase uh, kappa, the multilinear map arity, these get more expensive. So currently, there are three candidates for uh, uh, multilinear maps, GGH13, CLT13, and GGH15. And GGH13 has been uh, um, optimized uh, in this GGH light variant. And in this work, we uh, implement these, or we provide support for the first two candidates. So in more detail, what we do is we implement a wrapper library around multilinear map operations. Um, and we support, as I mentioned, GGH light uh, and CLT and a dummy multilinear map for testing purposes. And so now an application developer can, uh, uh, in some sense, be agnostic to the underlying multilinear map and can easily switch between the, uh, the multilinear maps uh, to benchmark performance or uh, whatever else they want to benchmark. So the way this works is we basically expose a uh, virtual methods table, and uh, the application developer would just set the virtual method table to whichever uh, multilinear map they're using. And this supports the basic operations we're interested in, um, uh, encoding an element into the multilinear map, adding to encodings, multiplying, checking whether the results is zero, the basic operations that you'd expect. Okay, so now let me describe how we can combine these two uh, tools that we've built to build uh, an obfuscator. 
So the basic construction is uh, fairly straightforward. So we begin by using cryfsm to compile the function we want to obfuscate into a matrix branching program. We then need one step where we randomize this uh, matrix branching program. Uh, the basic idea here is we take each matrix um, and multiply it by an invertible matrix such that when we evaluate and multiply all the matrices together, these invertible matrices will cancel out and we'll get the same result as the original matrix branching program. And finally, we uh, encode the matrix branching program using uh, a multilinear map, and so we can do this through uh, lib and map. Um, I'm uh, ignoring some details about uh, enforcing some input consistency and other uh, features we need for this to be a secure um, obfuscation scheme, um, but uh, the main components are, are all here. Okay, now that we have this obfuscated program, we can evaluate it uh, by essentially using libmmap to evaluate the encoded elements um, in our uh, encoded matrix branching program. This will produce a uh, top level encoding and then we can zero test that using uh, the multilinear map zero test uh, pr feature. And uh, that's it. So given, uh, given the tools that we've built here, um, it's fairly easy to build um, these types of applications. Okay, so, oh, the other thing to note is that the length of the matrix branching program is exactly equal to the multilinear map arity that we need, so it's equal to kappa. And this is because we are um, doing matrix multiplication and the total number of multiplications we need is essentially the length of the the branching program. Okay, so now to get to some uh, performance results. So uh, performance isn't great, um, but this is a, a first step, and hopefully any future development in this area will be able to plug into our framework and easily benchmark the performance versus uh, prior work. So for uh, order revealing encryption, for plain text length of, of roughly 40 bits, really, uh, uh, t uh, space zero to 10 to the 12 minus one. Um, we have the following results. So the important uh, one to key in on is this uh, last uh, row in this table, which is the strongest setting that we consider. So for security parameter 80, um, and what that says is it should take two to the 80 clock cycles to break this. Um, with current attacks, it's less clear whether this indeed holds for um, two to the 80. Um, but that's, I think, still uh, open. Um, so for two to the 80 security parameter and using the CLT multilinear map, which we found ended up being much more efficient than uh, GGH, uh, we see an encryption time of 37 minutes and an evaluation time, namely comparing two ciphertexts, um, takes around six minutes, and each ciphertext is six gigabytes. So for obfuscation, the uh, function that we looked at was a point function. So what a point function is, is that on an input x, we'll output one if x equals some hidden point and zero otherwise. Um, and so we obfuscated various point functions of input length 80 under various security parameters and different multilinear maps. And again, looking at this last row, we see uh, for security parameter 80 under the CLT multilinear map, it takes 3.3 hours to obfuscate, three minutes to evaluate, and a total ciphertext size of 8.3 gigabytes. Now this uh, is still very large, but compared to work from 2014, where they showed a 14-bit input, 60-bit security parameter obfuscation of a, of a point function, um, and that resulted in uh, obfuscation that was 31 gigabytes, um, so we have essentially a 3x improvement over that, and most of that comes from uh, the cry of a sem compiler and the optimizations that we introduced in the compilation process, um, along with a, a more careful analysis of the CLT uh, parameters. So just to uh, summarize, I have still plenty of time, but um, so in this work, uh, we built a framework for experimenting and developing, uh, experimenting with and de developing applications that use matrix branching programs and multilinear maps. The code is uh, open source. Uh, we're still developing it and uh, maintaining it, so 
please go ahead and uh, use it and feel free to submit bug reports or, or anything else. Um, and just a quick uh, bonus slide. So this work is being done as part of the DARPA Safeware program, which is a DARPA project uh, to uh, further develop the research and obfuscation in multilinear maps. And as part of that, uh, we're releasing a set of benchmark challenges. Um, so uh, with, the, with the aim of promoting the cryptanalysis of multilinear maps. So we have various challenges for both um, obfuscation, point function obfuscation, where the goal is to learn the point, and order revealing encryption, where the goal is to learn the plaintext under various multilinear maps and security parameters. Um, and um, all the information can be found here. And also, if you're interested, I have some USB keys that contain the challenges, since they're rather large. So with that, I'll say thank you. Full version of the paper's up. And again, the code and benchmark are uh, available as well. Uh, Ilya Miranov, Google. Uh, quick question. So, uh, what is the order of the maps uh, that you ended up using? Um, let me see if I can go back here. So, I believe it was um, length 27 for, for this case. I see. And the matrices were? Sorry? The, bearing, the matrices were uh, in, in the Barrington's theorem. Um, in the branching program. The number of matrices? No, the dimensionality of the, of the matrices. Sorry, I didn't catch that. The dimensionality of the matrices. Oh, um, well, so it varies uh, uh, based on where the matrix is in the matrix branching program. But I, it's like uh, the smallest is one by two, and I, I don't rem know what the largest is. I can look it up, though. I see. And uh, what is the, uh, in your opinion, the current status of the challenges given the advances in crypt analysis of multilinear maps? So, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, I believe the 80-bit under CLT is still okay. Um, I believe recently, around a week ago, there was an attack on, uh, on the GGH construction, but it's not also perfectly clear that those apply here, because those apply to um, specific, uh, when this is applied in a sort of an IO sense. And, uh, Point functions really can't be obfuscated using indistinguishability obfuscation. Um, so those attacks uh, will distinguish two obfuscated programs that are obfuscated um, that are equivalent. Um, but it's not clear um, whether they can also apply here. But mm -hmm. I, I imagine it, with some work it could be done. Thank you. Tim van der Kamp, um, University of Twente. I was wondering, um, so you run some performance uh, test, uh, but on, did you run this on a super computer? Or? Oh, yes, um, should have mentioned that. So we ran it on uh, Google Compute Engine, 32 cores and 200 gigabytes of RAM. Um, I don't think we came close to maxing out the RAM. I think the most we, for I think for the 80-bit, uh, uh, CLT, it was around 15 gigabytes, but I would have to double check. Okay, thank you. But it, yeah, 32 cores. Hi, I'm Valeria, I'm a PhD student from Stanford. I have a question about your compiler. So you said you first convert your program into a layered state machine, right? Um, why do you do so? And did you compare yourself to the other approach, which is maybe compile the program directly to the circuit using maybe ORAM compiler or something like that? and then convert the circuit to the branching program using, like, Barrington? Um, yeah, so uh, that was the approach taken in this work, and uh, it produces, using Barrington's theorem, it produces much larger um, branching programs. The other approach is going directly to circuits using an approach like Zimmerman, um, the Zimmerman compiler, which obfuscates a circuit directly, and uh, we're still investigating that as a possible approach.